welcome to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ, the podcast. I believe that the best coach you can ever have is that one person that is staring straight back at you every morning in the mirror, you. Join me in discovering some key strategies so that you can create an empowered life and inspire others to live theirs. Your journey to being your own best coach starts right now. Welcome to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ. Today we are talking about procrastination. Procrastination, which is the silent killer of success. Now I love this quote from Brian Tracy. The world is full of people who are waiting for someone to come along and motivate them to be the kind of people they wish they could be. The problem is that no one is coming to the rescue. Procrastination kills our dreams. Have you guys ever heard of the saying, if it's meant to be, it's up to me? We must be our own best coaches. We must continue to learn strategies to perform in our lives better. And we must stop bullshitting ourselves with our mini voice talk when it talks us out of things that we know we need to do to achieve our goals. Now, procrastination is the silent killer of success. Sometimes it's seen by others, but often it's hidden from others and it's in our head. But who it is not hidden by is ourself. You know, we know, don't we guys, when we should be doing something and we don't do it. Procrastination, it's it's this feeling of guilt and remorse and, oh, I should be doing this and we don't do it. So let's explore that today. I think about self-paced learning, for instance, in my business, I've got a course, an online course, which is called Empowered Speaker. And it's a self-paced learning course. And what fascinates me is how many people will get onto the self-paced learning course and they'll get into it and they'll go, yeah, I'm really excited. And the momentum happens and then slowly and slowly They don't take action because there is no one there saying, hey, have you done module one? Hey, have you done module two? Hey, have you done module three? Um, The beauty of the environment right now with COVID-19 is that I've looked at doing a lot of stuff, a lot more stuff online. So I've got all the guys that are in that course and I've said, okay, let's do a Zoom meeting every week and go through the modules together. Now, I've seen such a huge difference in regards to the actions that people are taking every week because they're suddenly being accountable to others about making sure that they do the do. But we don't always have someone out there saying, hey, have you done this? Particularly business owners. If you think about it, before you guys If you're a business owner, before you were a business owner and you had someone that you, a boss that you would have to say, look, that you were accountable to, then they would be saying, hey, have you done that work? Have you done, have you rang that customer? Have you follow up that lead? They're the person that's telling you and they're the ones that are saying you've done a great job or you're not doing a great job. But when you're in your own business, it's up to you. If it's meant to be, it's up to me. So we need to have really great strategies to be able to get stuff done in our businesses. Now, what is procrastination? I looked at the dictionary and the definition is, is the avoidance of doing a task that needs to be accomplished by a certain deadline. And in the word actually originated in Latin, and I'm probably going to say this incorrectly, but I'll say it anyway. Procrastinus means belonging to tomorrow and procrastination means putting things off intentionally or habitually. So that's what procrastination is. And I want to explore with you guys, there's there's different types of procrastination as well. And I want to explore that a little bit. I want to get into 
how some strategies of how we can stop procrastinating and start getting stuff done and to really understand ourselves and the strategies that work for us and understanding our personality style as well. So when we're procrastinating, we're all different human beings. So some of us, maybe it's fun that we're looking for. So we're searching for fun and the stuff that's not fun, we're not doing it. So really understanding who we are in regards to procrastination and then thinking about some strategies that are right for you individually that's going to help you progress and get stuff done in your life and in your business. So there's some some different types of procrastinations. I've I've named five types of procrastinations and this is how I see it that there's fear there's a fear procrastination where we're scared of something we're scared of being judged or not being liked or the the outcome we're looking at the outcome we're thinking it might be bad sometimes we might even be thinking it's good because we if we're thinking oh, I'm fearful that that person's going to say yes if I approach them then I've got to then take responsibility for what I need to do for that client or whatever it is so sometimes it's we're scared of success. We're scared that someone's going to say yes, because that means we've got to step up and take responsibility. So there's the fear of or the fear procrastination. Then there's the, the fun or the challenge. So it, it, we might look at things and think, oh, that's too boring or, rep- or you know, repetitive or, or we might say it's too easy. It's not challenging enough for us or it's too hard. So therefore, I don't want to do it. I know for me, fun is a very high value for me. And I have to say, guys, when it comes tax time, I I, I have to really self-coach myself because tax time is something, you can hear it in my voice when I talk about it, is not a task that I would jump up and down and say, oh, this is going to be so fun. Now, I know that some of you might love tax time. You might love organising all your receipts and all doing all of that and, you know, dotting the I's, crossing the T's, making sure everything. It is not something that I naturally are drawn to. <laughs> so when it comes to tax time, I know that I can procrastinate because what I look at is I see this repetitive task. I see something that's not fun. And so I really have to ensure that I coach myself through this the process of doing it so that I will get it done. Um, the other procrastination could be reward or recognition. If you're not, if it doesn't seem like you're going to perceive that you're going to get a, a bigger reward, and whatever that reward is, if it's perceived to be a low reward thing that you, you're doing, then you're not freaking going to do it. And sometimes people that are high in significance, maybe it's it's that you're not going to get recognized by others by doing it. And so therefore, it's it's a low, it's like, I don't want to do it because no one's going to recognize it. Now, you may not say that out loud and you may not even be consciously thinking that, but unconsciously, you might be thinking that. It might be, okay, you really wanting to get some type of recognition for what you're doing. Uh, and then there's the fourth one, which is plenty of time. You see this a lot of a lot of times in students, and I know when I did my year twelve, <laughs> uh, I was the plenty of time girl. It's like, well, I've got these assignments, I can do them. I've got plenty of time. I've got a month to do it, and uh, the night before, and this literally happened to me. The night before, I was, I did, I pulled an all nighter. I had no sleep because all the deadlines came at once. And so, for me to say, all for all that month or however long it was, I was saying, it's all right, I've got enough time. Uh, then I had to put in an all nighter to get it all done. Now, the other thing with that is, is the risk of. And I see this with my master's course that I run, is that you can also then, it's like a, 
get out of jail free card or not taking responsibility card because what then you can say is oh well i i would have done better but i didn't really you know i didn't really have the time and so you make excuses for your work because in case someone says it's not good enough it's like i've got this out because i didn't have enough time to do it where in reality you did have enough time usually you've had the whole month but you've tried to cram it all in and left things to the last minute and sometimes we even have these beliefs around that it's like i'm really good under pressure like i'm really good leaving things to the last minute is that really true I would ask myself, is it really true? Now, the fifth type of procrastination is it has to be perfect. So, so the people, it's, it's like you've just stuck in perfectionism. And I often say this to my clients, progression over perfection. Now, there's particular types of personality styles, which I'm going to talk about that really love the details. They will stay stuck in the details. And being stuck in the details, you can go over and over. You can spend so much time on one task that you're not getting everything else done. So be really mindful if that is you because it's progression over perfection. Doesn't mean that you just do a shit job But what it does mean is that you've got to look at the big picture and say, look, I need to get this done. Sometimes you've got to say, okay, I can check this two twice or three times or how many ever times is right for you, but I'm not going to check it 20, 50 times. I need to get it out there and get it completed. And so this, so if I go back with the five types of procrastination, so we've got the fear We've got the fun or challenge people that are wanting to make sure that they've got fun and challenge. And so therefore, if they don't see fun or challenge, they don't want to do it. We've got the reward or recognition, perceived low reward. Uh, We've got the plenty of time person. And then we've also got the perfectionist as well. Now, let's talk about the different personality styles. Now, I talk about some of you, you know, there's lots of different personality style programs like Myers-Briggs. I'm really talking about, it's called Extended Disc and I will be doing some podcast on Extended Disc personality styles going forward. But let's talk about these four different personality styles and you will relate to one or two or, or a few of them. And, and it really does come down to procrastination does link into the type of personality you are. So you could be a personality, we call it the D energy, which is you get shit done. You love a challenge. You could be high in significance, so it's like you really need to be recognized or feel that this is that you feel great in regards to what you're doing. But you can be really impatient as well. Like you want things done yesterday. Now On the surface, you might think, well, those type of people would never procrastinate because they like to get shit done. (laughs) They want things done yesterday. But the thing is, they are big pictured people. And so if they perceive things to be boring or, you know, uh, repetitive or there's only a short, they want a short term reward. They want a reward quickly if it's a long term reward. Maybe it's something that they'll just go, oh, I'll just delegate. Now, delegation's fine if you can do that, but there is still stuff that we need to do ourselves that no one else can do. So that person needs to look at it. And and as I said, they're the get shit done person. If they see things as boring and repetitive, they've got to shift their mindset. And we'll talk about strategies a little bit later on in regards to how they can get their stuff done that they might originally think that is boring or repetitive and then you've got the eye energy who is loves fun they can be the shiny new things here uh, a th- uh, shiny new thing person who it's like oh they're on this task and then oh there's a puppy and they go <laughs> so they like variety they're very big picture they do not like the detail and they can be very people focused so they've got to really make sure that you know, if, if they're on a task and I know this person well because it is me and, and the D energy is me as well, 
but the eye energy can be very distracted, particularly when it comes to people. And so the strategy could be to make sure that you turn off all devices and you are focused with a one thing in, a, in that time frame so that you do not get distracted of the shiny new thing syndrome. So the eye energy loves fun. So let's try and create some fun in whatever it is that we need to do. Now, the S energy is someone that, that does not like uncertainty, does not like change doesn't like new things necessarily uh, and doesn't always like to be the person in the limelight, the centre of attention. They're more behind the scenes type of person. And so they could be procrastinating on things that maybe give them the spotlight, uh, that that embraces new things. So maybe they've got to learn new things that, that they don't know, new skills that they're not comfortable with. Uh, or or approach new people that they're a little bit, you know, oh, I don't know, I don't know that person. So that person needs to, the S energy needs to embrace that, even though it can be fearful, that change and uncertainty and be also be able to be seen sometimes. And the C energy is the perfectionism person who will is really great with details. Their biggest fear is being criticised. So they love to dot the I's, cross the T's, make sure everything is right. Now they can get stuck into the details. So it's really important that the C energy looks at the big picture as well. So they could be procrastinating on a task because they're wanting to get it so, so right when they're not really looking at the big picture. And getting the whole thing done in a certain time frame because sea energies love to they can be on a project for a very long time rather than the d energy that we talked about before wants things done and short sharp and and and, and to the point c energies could could have a project that they can work on for a long time so it's really important that they're not too stuck in the details now, when I'm thinking about procrastination, I'm a very visual person and it's like this ball and chain holding us back. It's, it's like I see this success that we have or wherever, whatever we want to create in our life and I see it. I can see it in the distance. And then as you're trying to walk towards this success, this, this life that you're creating, there's this ball and chain holding you back and pulling you in different directions that is taking you away from the success that you want to create. And when you're doing procrastination, it's, it's like this loop because you know that you need to do these things. Then you procrastinate and then you make excuses of why you didn't do it. And then when you do that, you, you can feel guilty and, and then there's lack of trust within yourself because, and then your confidence goes down because you know in your heart that you needed to do it. You procrastinate, you make excuses, you feel guilty about it and then you lack confidence and it's like this loop that goes around and then something else happens and I know I need to do it but then you still, you're lacking confidence with the last task that you did, and it's this loop, and it's about us changing that loop and the emotions that go with it because we can feel a, a lot of remorse or, or feel like a failure or guilt or lack of trust within ourselves. But the great thing is that we can change it straight away. We can change it right now by putting some strategies together. And, and the pattern, there's this pattern that happens. I, I call it it's like we, we hit the snooze button in our life. We delay our success. And we might even say things like, I'll do it tomorrow. I need to think about it. I'll start my diet on Monday or next week or next month or after, after the party or in the friggin' new year. I don't know. When are you going to do it? We delay our success. We hit the snooze button on our life. We, and I love this, this is what Mel Robbins says. 
Mel Robbins, the coach who has the five second rule book. And she says, and I love this, we are amazing at fooling ourselves into staying exactly where we are. As soon as that impulse that kicks in, you start rationalizing it away. We hit the snooze button on our life, guys. When I And I love books and, and I do quote a lot of, about books. And one of the books that I love that I'm reading again at the moment is Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich. And he says, with procrastination, this is one of the most common causes of failure. Old man procrastination, he calls it, stands within the shadow of every human being, waiting his opportunity to spoil one's chances of success. Most of us, through life as failures, most of us go through life, I should say, as failures because we are waiting for the time to be right to start doing something worthwhile. Do not wait. The time will never be just right. Start where you stand and work with whatever tools you may have at your command and better tools will be found as you go along. And I love that. And the other thing that he says, which is really important, is the link between procrastination and decision making. And he says, indecision and procrastination are twin brothers. Where one is found, the other may usually be found also. Kill off this pair before they completely hog tie you to the treadmill of failure. And I love that. And a lot of the time I will see when I go, I, I run my events and I have these public events and I'll get 100 people and I have people that sit on the fence. They know that they want to do the training, but they sit on the fence and they try and talk themselves out of the training. And I love the saying, say yes and then work out how and make a decision quickly and change your mind slowly. And, and that is a pattern of successful people, right? The opposite of that is trying to get all your ducks lined up before you will say yes. You've got to make sure you've got all of your ducks lined up before you're going to say yes. Or you make decisions really slowly and then you change your mind quickly, right? So if we can make sure that even those two things make a huge difference, I used to be the person that would always need to have everything, all my ducks lined up. Now, I know that in the last, you know, even if I look at the last 12 months, if I, was, if I was doing that in the last 12 months, then I would not have achieved all that I've achieved in the last 12 months because I'd still be waiting for my ducks to line up. Sometimes we've just got to move forward. We've got to lean in. Lean in even though we haven't got all of our ducks lined up, even though we don't know how yet, but we say yes first and then we work out how later. And decision making, making those decisions really quickly. I remember being at a Tony Robbins event and thinking, I really want to, I want to sign up for freaking everything. Like I want, I really want to do this. And I had heart palpitations because I knew of the financial investment that I needed to make and I wanted to make, but it, it was terrifying for me. But I said to myself, you know what? Yes, I'm going to say yes and then I'm going to work out how later. And I did. And I created that moment in time where, yes, I flew to the US to, to get trained with Tony and I'm so glad I did. And I worked everything out. And it escalated my business by doing that. But it was freaking scary when I did it, guys. It was really scary. So sometimes with those two things, by saying yes and working out how, and by making decisions quickly and changing your mind slowly, those two things alone are really amazing strategies to take on board. Now, you've got to find a strategy that works for you. Because I don't think every strategy works for each of us. We're all different individuals. So I'm going to talk through a couple 
that have worked for me and that I've tried. And then you can try them out for yourself or not and see if they work for you. And so it, it will depend. I think the, the first thing that I would do is look at what your person is, personality style is. Look at the five types of procrastination. So is it fear or fun and challenge or reward and recognition or plenty of time or you have to have things perfect? And look at those and of course they'll overlap. So sometimes it'll be fear, sometimes it might be fun or challenge. Another task that you need to do might be you have to have it perfect. So there'll be a variety often of different types of procrastination. But for you to recognize what when you're procrastinating or you start to procrastinate, what is it? What personality style are you? And what type of procrastination are you doing or you're about to do right now? So I think that's really important to, to know where you're at at the, at the beginning. And then it's your identity of who are you? Because we rarely behave against our identity. We, we want to protect our identity of who we think we are. So when we say I am, what are we saying after that? Are we saying oh, I'm someone that's really, really busy and I'm someone that I get things done in the last minute because I work better under pressure? Now, if that's working for you, go, go for it. But what you say after I am is really important because it's part of your identity. So I will say things like I am an action taker. I am someone who has the difficult conversations. I am someone, I am the person that gets shit done. I am that person. And talking about getting shit done, I saw this, I heard this this story about, it's called a dung beetle. I don't know if you guys have heard of a, a dung beetle. But a dung beetle is this beetle that collects dung and it collects it and it collects it, you know, it takes, I don't know how many, some of you that are listening would know how many hours or days or weeks or however, it takes a long time for this little dung beetle. It's a really, it is a productive little beetle because it goes around and collects all this dung and collects little bits of it until it forms a little circle and then a bigger circle and a bigger circle until it forms a really big circle of dung. Now, it's a really clever clever beetle. Me being someone that's highly visual, I actually look at that and think of procrastination in that way <laughs> because I think sometimes we put things off and it's only a little bit of dung that we're putting off, but then we put it off again and we put something else off and we take something else and we put that off and we put that off and put that off and suddenly we've got a whole friggin' big circle of dung. We have a whole lot of shit people that we have to deal with because we haven't dealt with it and we know it. We can try and talk ourselves out of it. We can try and numb ourselves by having a glass of wine or watching TV or whatever it is, trying to numb ourselves and sweep things under the carpet. But our unconscious mind knows when we're doing that. We're not fooling ourselves. We can't fool ourselves. We know that we need to get this stuff done, whatever that stuff is. And so I see this dung beetle of every time we're putting that even that one thing off. So whether it be your taxes, guys, like myself, and I had to sit there with all these freaking receipts. And maybe it started with one freaking receipt, and then there was two, and then there was three, and then it was four, and then you create this whole big freaking dung <laughs> in your life. We want to make sure that we don't do that, that we don't create this big pile of shit in our life. We get stuff done. Now, the other thing that's really important, I feel, in a strategy for procrastination is being very, very clear with your goals, being very clear, because then you can ask yourself and, and self-coach yourself with whatever you're doing, is this taking me towards my goal or away from my goal? And so, and it links in with your identity as well. So who do you need to be? to be able to achieve the goal and, and the life that you want to create. 
And then any of these goals that you're creating, is this working towards my goal or away from my goal? And pain and pleasure, and I know I've talked about this in, in other podcasts, is so powerful because when it's a task that if we have a task that we want to do, so for instance, I'll go back to the, the, the tax. In my head, I've created pain of doing the tax and pleasure of doing something else. And when I do that, I don't want to do that task, right? And so if we can relate enough pain of not doing that task and enough pleasure of doing the task, then we will do it. So for instance, even if you think of habits, if you think someone says, I want to stop smoking, but then what happens is they might say things like, smoking relaxes me. So again, they're saying to themselves, there's pleasure by staying being a smoker. So they might say, oh, it relaxes me. It makes me feel good by smoking. And it's social. And so again, so there's all this pleasure around keeping the habit of smoking. And so if, if stopping smoking is part of what you want to do in your tasks, then if you keep enough pain by giving up the cigarettes, it's like, oh, but if I give them up then, oh, you know, then I'm not going to really be that social. Or if I give them up, I might put on weight. Like thinking about all the stuff, the pain by giving it up. Now, if you if you change that and you put enough pain to, to continue smoking, it's like, well, you know, every time you, you puff on that cigarette, that nicotine is going all into your body. It's just, and then not only that, like you think about your lungs and every time you're putting that cigarette in your mouth, that, that, that smoke is going and it's going all into your lungs and there's that little speck. It's like the dung, right? It's just that one little speck of blackness. And then there's another little speck of blackness. And then you, and then you may not... <coughs> you may not be able to breathe as good. And you maybe you don't notice it straight away. Maybe it's just that first <coughs> little, <coughs> oh, that's just a cough. And there's a, <coughs> a bigger cough. And then you walk around and people think you friggin' stink, right? You stink. You stink of smoke. And they may not even say anything, guys. They're not telling you, but they can friggin' smell it. And you can't even smell it, maybe, because you're a smoker. And so... And, and then I think about the, the amazing, like you're looking at your bank account and you're thinking, Frig, I was spending a hundred bucks a week, a hundred bucks a week on cigarettes. What now can I buy after a year of not smoking? Shit, let's have a holiday. Let's go to Europe, right? Let's go to Europe or whatever it is. So you, there's enough pain and enough pleasure to be able to, to do that task of saying, hey, I'm going to get this done because if I don't, this is going to happen. And if I do, this exciting thing will happen. So pain and pleasure can be really powerful. The other thing that we often can do is we can go into overwhelm because we blow up a task. We think that it's big. Now we've got to shrink the task. Always shrink, shrink the task and put it into chunks. Let's do the first step. Just focus on the first step. And I love one of my mentors, Joe Pane, who I adore. I, I remember him saying a story about a client of his who wanted to exercise, but thinking of exercise because they had been sedentary for such a long time was a big thing for them. to. They were going into overwhelm. And so Joe said to this client, all I want you to do tomorrow is I want you to put on your runners and then I want you to take them off. That's all I want you to do. Just put your runners on and take them off. And so the person said, I can do that. So they put the runners on and took them off. And then the next day, what I want you to do is I want you to put the runners on and just go to walk to your 
letterbox and then come back take your runners off that's it that's all i want you to do i don't want you to do any more than that and so then the person did that they went to the post and then i was like oh i can do that okay and so then maybe there was a next step so maybe it was by the end of the street let's just go to the street walk to the end of the street come back take your runners off and so it it's then seemed achievable rather than say you know what you've got to start exercising why don't we do a 10k walk <laughs> right so by chunking things down and shrinking a task rather than blowing it up i find is really really helpful now there's lots of things about time management about scheduling and focusing and you know we need to have some some type of discipline in regards to what we want done because it, and the, and what we want done needs to be direct in direct relation to our goals i love the book eat that frog and eat that frog is a philosophy of if there's something that you really know that you've got to do even if you don't like it just get it done straight away like if you had to eat and sorry for the vegetarians here but it's an analogy on eat that frog is that if there was this this dirty frog with warts that you had to eat it every single day wouldn't it be better to just get it over with in the morning rather than know that you had to do it but and so it's in your unconscious mind the whole day but you're doing other stuff instead so that's the analogy of the book now the great thing also is that when we have a to-do list now, some of you might go, oh, to do this list don't work for me. And I don't know if that's true. It could be true. It may be you saying it's not true because then you don't, if you don't put it down, therefore you don't have to take responsibility. I don't know. You only know that. But when you have a to-do list and you tick it off, you actually get endorphins. And I don't know about you, <laughs> but for me, and I know that there's some listeners that, that will, will relate to this, that sometimes I'll go, oh, I did it and it wasn't on my to-do list. So I write it on and then I freaking tick it off. <laughs> and I actually, well, not just tick it off, I highlight it off. I've got like these bright texts. It's like, yes, I've done that. Uh, so I want to get the endorphins, obviously. But it's really important that we schedule our day that's right for us and know what is the best time for us to do certain things. Like for me, I, I love mornings and I'm really good in the morning. So for me to be creative, I'm very creative in the morning. I've, I've, and I know this is a belief system, uh, but it does work for me because at night, uh, I just, I, it just doesn't work for me as well. So in the morning, I can get up freaking three o'clock in the morning and be on fire and that really works for me. So I know... If I'm going to read, for instance, if I'm going to create courses, uh, exercise for me in the morning is the best time for me to do it. So look at things and when you're allocating your day, make sure it works for who you are and allocate that accordingly. And I know that in Eat That Frog book that there's that you can do your to-do list and you might say, okay, A is... The frog that I've got to eat. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to eat that frog. Then you might allocate, okay, what else do I need to do? So they're the things that I should do. These are the nice to do. These are the things I might delegate. Or these are things that I might eliminate. I really don't need to do it. So really looking at your to-do list and having it in a format that works for you that the most important things that you need to do, you tick off or highlight off uh, in the day. I love this saying, this quote from Alan Lakin, I think his name is, and it says, planning is bringing the future into the present so you can do something about it now. And I love that. And so for us to be able to plan effectively is really important. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, so I've got to be a go-getter. I've got to get all this stuff done. Work, work, work. Hustle, hustle, hustle. I, I want you to think differently about this because I want you to go back to your goals and your vision because there's even people that we might might even say to themselves, I'm a workaholic, 
right? I'm a workaholic. And then they look at their goals and vision and part of their goals and vision is to spend more time with family or their goal and vision is to look after self more, be kind to, the, to yourself. So therefore, you, you may, may need to schedule family time. You may need to schedule relaxation time. It doesn't mean that you're lazy, guys. If you want, if you have scheduled in a time to sit in front of your computer or your TV and watch a Netflix movie because that is what you have scheduled and planned and said, I need this, go for it. Because remember, we are creating our own lives. So whatever we schedule and put into our, our plan is in direct proportion to where we want to go, our goals and vision in our life. So that's really important. I, w- I wanted to say that because sometimes people think, I've got to hustle, 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 get things done, write my book, do all of this. But there's also self-care and time with family and fun and adventure and travel and being creative. It might be you playing, learning learning the piano or painting or whatever it is, please make sure whatever you're going to design in your life that is part of your schedule, there's time for you to just relax. It might be, oh, I'm going to have a nap today because I know that my body needs to rest. I don't know. You can you can design whatever you want in your life. So I really wanted to make that point. And I love, I love this quote also from William out at William Matthews. The first law of success is concentration. To bend all the energies to one point, looking neither to the right nor to the left. And so what that quote saying is that we need to be really focused in whatever it is that we want to achieve. And I I think sometimes, particularly if we go back to the personality styles of, say, the I energy, someone that's a shiny new thing and likes variety, when we can focus on getting that one thing done and limit our distractions, so turn our phone off, turn off our email, making sure that that everything, is, it, we are focused. For that hour on that task, we are focused. That's when we really get that momentum going. Now, a couple other things that that are really important in strategies is our self-talk or our mantras. So often we negotiate with ourselves. We negotiate ourselves out of stuff. So let's change the way we talk to ourselves. If we're afraid of something and we say, I'm afraid, then we're not going to want to do it. Let's change that to, I'm excited about doing this. Or you might be saying that negative self-talk talk of, I need to think about it. Why don't you shift that to, I make decisions quickly and change my mind slowly. Or I say yes and then I work out how. So have a mantra or something that you say, I get shit done or whatever it is that's going to move you forward to creating the life that you want to create. Now the other silent killer of procrastination, which Mel Robbins talks about in her book, The Five Second Rule, is hesitation. And what Mel Robbins says is right before we're about to do something that feels difficult, scary, or uncertain, we hesitate. Hesitation is the kiss of death. And it is so true. We think about it, it's like, oh, I'm going to do this Facebook Live. And it's like, oh, 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 no, hold on. Maybe I should get some lipstick on. And you go and get the lipstick. And then you look again, oh, maybe my hair's not right. And you go away. Oh, maybe I can do it tomorrow, actually. Tomorrow will be better. And we hesitate and talk ourselves out of stuff. With Mal Robbins' book, I love it. It is so simple. It's such a simple strategy, but it works. By counting down and saying, when you feel that little bit of hesitation, you say in your head or out loud, five, four, three, two, one, go. And you do it. You go. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Now, there's a reason why you don't do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, 12, 13, 14, and then the next year you're still, you're up to a million, whatever it is. But five, four, three, two, one, you're doing it. And you're counting down, down and going. And you're, and that's a really great way to jumpstart rather than getting to that hesitation just to do what you know that you want to do. The other thing that's really important and 
absolutely works is having an accountability partner or having outside accountability of some sort. So I know with my master's course that I have, I give some tasks to my students and some of them are really, really challenging. And what I get them to do is promise each other in the group that they are going to complete it. And they, they, they say to each person, they go around and they say, I promise that I'm going to complete this by tomorrow morning. I promise you I'm going to complete this by tomorrow morning. And by saying that, because often we will do more for others than we do for ourselves. And so if we go out and we promise someone else that we're going to do something, we're more likely to do it. So having an accountability partner, please select them someone that will really keep you accountable, not hold you back. Uh, or even declaring what you're going to do in public. Declaring it. You, know, you could have your Facebook clients and all these people that are following you and you say, I promise you guys by tomorrow I'm going to do this. I promise that I'm going to be walking three days a week. I promise I'm going to, to whatever it is. And you declare it in public. And because most of us, are so fearful of public humili humiliation, we will stand and we will do what we said that we, we will do because we've put it out there. Uh, so that's also a great way. The other thing that I think is, is great is if you design a perfect day or a perfect week. We are so habitual. So if we think about what we do every day that works for us, like I have such a routine in the morning. I mean, one of my routines is I love oil diffusers so I get up I put all my oil diffusers on and in my head it's like the, these oil diffusers are helping me think right <laughs> because it's got all this beautiful aroma and <clears throat> it helps me uh it gets sets me up for the day now uh, now that's just part of my routine so if we can have habits and routines that we can create we can design it that our week or our, our day is scheduled. So every Wednesday, is when, Wednesday at 9am is when I, I contact my leads or whatever it is. After 21 days, they say, I think it is that we create a habit. If we continue to have that, that day or that week, then it becomes a habit and it's a lot easier for us to do. And, you know, the, the thing is, guys, that... It is our moments of decision that our future is formed. Now, we've just talked about procrastination and how it is the silent killer of success. It holds us back. It is our ball and chain holding us back from the dreams and the life that we know that we want to create. But the exciting thing is that right now, it doesn't matter where we are, what we've achieved, what we haven't achieved, how much we've procrastinated or how much we haven't procrastinated. It doesn't matter. Right now in this moment of time is that we can make a decision that will form our future. So we can make a decision to stop hitting the snooze button on our dreams. You can make a decision to stop collecting that dung and collecting that freaking pile of shit. We can stop negotiating with ourselves. And instead, we can start creating the life that we've designed. And you can start being the leader in your own life even more. And you can start being the role model that shows others what is possible. And I know that I often think about the last moments of my life. And if you think about the last moments of your life and where you're going to be, are you going to be saying, I wish I, if only, I should have? Or instead are you going to say, I created a fulfilled life. I have left an amazing legacy and I am proud of who I have become and what I have achieved. To your success, guys. See you on the next podcast.
Thanks for tuning in to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ. Make sure you subscribe to this podcast and follow me on Instagram at JJ Speaker Coach. And remember to live with insatiable passion, create an empowered life and inspire others to live theirs.